Hello, welcome in the 13th lecture of two phase flow and heat transfer. Today in this lecture we will be discussing about interface tracking methodologies. If you remember in our last lecture we have discussed about two fluid population balance method where we have dealt how uh, dispersed two phase flow can be handled computationally. Here I will be showing you how interface can be captured in case of well separated flow okay, where interface is clearly identifiable. Okay, let me see uh, at the end of this lecture we will be understanding methods for tracking interface mainly we will be stressing on volume of fluid methodology. We will be understanding reconstruction schemes of interface from the data of volume of fluid in different cells. We will be practicing a case study using volume of fluid based freeware. So, in this we will be understanding how the freeware can be installed, how we can set model parameters in the freeware, how we can run a case in using this freeware and finally, I will be showing you how results can be obtained and evaluated. Based on the present experience of this lecture, you can perform basic two phase flow simulations using volume of fluid solver. So, to begin with let us first see that what is uh, volume of fluid method. Uh, before going to volume of fluid method, we need some grid based framework okay, to solve uh, the governing equations basically your mass, momentum and energy equations. Here I have taken example of finite volume approach, you can have any other uh, approach also. Uh, for example, you can have finite difference or finite element methodology, but uh, let me give you little bit idea about finite volume approach. In this finite volume approach, we discretize the domain, let us say this rectangular box is our domain, we discretize this domain into small, small uh, contrast control volumes okay. and at the center uh, of the control volume or we can say at the CG uh, center of uh, gravity of the uh, control volume, uh, we designate a grid okay, node point or a node point over here. Majority of the time these node points are making Cartesian grid okay, and it will be uh, structured in fashion. So, we will be finding out that uh, volume of fluid approach first discretize the domain into finite volumes where the centroid location is actually considered as the node. Now, in these nodes we find out how mass, momentum and energy is being conserved. So, what we do we find out the information propagation and integrate over that volume okay, based on the boundary uh, whatever inflow and outflow of information is coming in or out depending on that we find out what is the conservation of any information. And from there we uh, employ uh, different uh, heat flow and fluid flow problems okay, uh, to take care uh, in single phase. Now, whenever it comes to two phase flow, so uh, the important uh, thing what we need to take care is the interface tracking because apart from mass, momentum and energy equation, we will be also having one interface which needs to be tracked at every point of time because through that interface only we will be having the uh, mass and momentum, uh, mass and energy transfer. Okay. So, here uh, I have shown you a figure where you can find out two fluids are there. So, bottom one is red colored fluid may be some sort of heavy fluid or light fluid okay. and here we are having another fluid of different uh, density. So, here you can find out uh, that uh, through this interface there will be some sort of momentum or uh, energy transfer. Okay. So, uh, this interface capturing is very important. If the interface is straight obviously the length of the interface will be smaller compared to this car will carved interface. So, the scope of uh, interaction will be reducing whenever the length of interface reduces. Okay. No, so, this capturing this interface or tracking this interface will be very, very important. Okay. In finite uh, volume methodology, we have several options for uh, tracking the interface. Some of the methodologies are uh, volume of fluid methodology, level set methodology, marker and cell or MAC methodologies. Okay. Uh, here in this lecture, we will be discussing about volume of fluid or VOF technology. Okay. 
So, uh, let me give you brief idea what is volume of fluid methodology. So, you see uh, as it is uh, a problem of two phase, uh, so obviously mass momentum and energy equation will be involved. So, here you see we are having continuity equation for mass conservation, momentum equation for your uh, uh, momentum conservation and over here energy equation for conservation of energy. Okay. All these three will be acting similarly as we have dealt in our uh, single phase computational fluid dynamics. Okay. But only difference will be that here we need to consider that how uh, the phase properties across the interface will be defined. So, for that we include one additional equation which is called volume fraction equation. Now, this volume fraction equation gives uh, uh, some sort of uh, information to the overall system of equations and finally, you will be finding out that uh, all these three equations continuity, momentum and energy equation is getting tuned by this uh, volume fraction equation. Okay. So, uh, this volume fraction equation is very, very important in case of two phase flow computations. Uh, next, let us see that in this volume of fluid methodology, what type of equations we solve. As I have told you that we will be having mass and momentum conservation equation. Here also I have shown you the mass and momentum conservation equation. To make it simple, I have eliminated the energy part. One can also add that energy part later on. So, here you see I have given uh, the basic continuity equation looks like similar to your uh, single phase continuity equation having density rho. Now, what is this rho I will be telling you? Uh, this rho is actually uh, uh, some average density in the field uh, and this average density will be having uh, uh, some particular value at the bulk and uh, uh, some intermediate value uh, between the uh, bulk properties near the interface. Okay. So, that uh, uh, rho can be defined actually this rho will be function of uh, volume fraction of one phase inside a cell. Now, that volume fraction we actually capture using one uh, property called C. Okay. So, C is the volume fraction. So, that means let us say we are talking about uh, uh, two fluids uh, 1 and 2 let us say 1 is the first fluid and 2 is the second fluid. So, in that case you will be finding out that we are having C 1 uh, equals to uh, 1 in the bulk of uh, first fluid and C 2 is equals to 1 at the bulk of second fluid. And uh, uh, the uh, corresponding uh, values of C 2 and C 1 in the first fluid and second fluid will be becoming 0. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we can define the density based on the volume fraction of any of these two fluids. Let us say this C is nothing but the uh, volume fraction for the first fluid. So, this rho C can be written as C into rho 1 plus 1 minus C into rho 2. That means, whenever you are in the bulk of uh, first fluid where value of C is 1, you will be getting that rho gets the value of rho 1 and whenever you are in the bulk of uh, 2 second fluid, then you will be getting that this value value of rho will be taking uh, rho 2 because C will be at that time becoming 0. Okay. Similarly, viscosity can be also defined. So, mu C is equals to C into mu 1 first fluid viscosity plus 1 minus C into mu 2 second fluid viscosity. Okay. Uh, volume fraction here I have shown that inside a cell, let us say this is a cell, inside a cell how much portion of the cell is occupied or volume, how much volume is occupied by some particular phase. Okay. Here I have seen, I have shown that C is the volume fraction for the uh, uh, first fluid. Okay. First fluid means 1th fluid. Okay. Now, depending on the C, you see uh, we can find out the rho and mu and we can write down a continuity equation. Okay. Uh, so, we will not be having essentially here two continuity equations for both the fluids, we will be having single continuity equation, but the properties uh, guiding these continuity equations will be changing. Okay. So, rho will be getting some value uh, in the bulk, uh, okay, different values for different fluids and near the interface it will be getting the intermediate value. Okay. Uh, for incompressible fluid obviously, this continuity equation will be turning out to be del u i del x i. So, for most of the uh, air water applications we can consider this one. Okay. Momentum equation as usual from uh, basic fluid mechanics we can write down like this. Only uh, added portion will be over here for the uh, surface tension portion because as we are dealing with two phase. So, obviously, we will be having surface tension involved in that. Okay. So, uh, surface tension will be involved in the interface which is nothing but uh, um, given in the form of delta d that function delta s. So, delta s is actually the uh, function which controls uh, the value of surface tension. Will 
will be 0 at the bulk and at the interface only it will be getting the finite value ok. And n obviously is the uh, perpendicular direction of the interface ok. So, that can be calculated from the gradient of your uh, uh, this volume fraction c ok. Now, uh, as time progresses we will be finding out that the interface location is changing. So, obviously, this value of c will be changing across uh, the time. So, you need to get some equation of uh, c uh, which will be advecting from one place to another place along with the time. So, we have this. Uh, uh, governing equation uh, for uh, conservation of volume fraction. So, you see del c del t plus del of, so this is the uh, special derivative del of c into u where u is the velocity at that particular cell is equals to 0. So, with this equation we update the value of uh, uh, volume fraction and uh, calculate the corresponding density and go back to your uh, continuity and momentum equation for solution. Okay. So, altogether we have seen in volume of fluid uh, in place of uh, uh, 4 equations as we have seen our separated flow uh, uh, here we are getting actually 3 equations. One equation for uh, uh, continuity, one equation for momentum and along with that we are having one volume of fluid equation which is basically your conservation of C equation. Okay. Next, uh, let me tell you uh, that the, what uh, are the ways of discretizing these equations and you know using uh, finite uh, volume methodology how we can solve these equations. So, there are various schemes for solution of these equations, but today I will be showing you one scheme which is most efficient and uh, which is uh, very good uh, from stability point of view. So, it is actually staggered in time uh, solution. So, here uh, what I will be finding out, uh, let us say we are having uh, uh, two time levels. Uh, uh, which is uh, n and n plus 1, n is the present time level where all the values of uh, u uh, rows and c's are known to me and we are supposed to predict uh, the next time level which is n plus 1. Okay. So, uh, in case of staggered time we will be finding out apart from n plus 1 we are supposed to find out the properties or value at n plus half, so which is half time step. Okay. So, uh, here I have shown you that uh, from the momentum equation what we do we find out uh, the values at n plus half. Now, you see here uh, all the nth tags are actually known to me only unknown tag is u star. Okay. Now, this u star is actually some pseudo velocity at n plus half time level. So, what we do in this uh, right hand side you see everything is based on your uh, um, nth time step. Okay. So, we find out uh, the values over here using nth time step and then we get the value of u star. But here you see we are having uh, some components like uh, you know uh, n plus half level uh, pressure value and n plus half level uh, surface tension values. These values are once again calculated from extrapolation of nth value. Okay. So, you see first we get the value of u star and then we put the value over here in the u star in the right hand side and we get the updated value of uh, uh, p of n plus half. Now, once we get the value of p of n plus half we can give it back to the momentum equation once again and we can find out the new value of u star. So, this procedure uh, continues uh, and you will be finding out after some time we will be getting some uh, converged uh, result of u star and p n plus half. So, once we get u star and p n plus half which is converged one using uh, this continuity equation we can find out u n plus 1. Okay. Now, remember this u n plus 1 is the velocity at the next time level. Okay. So, once we have found out this u n plus 1 you can quickly cross check whether this uh, uh, solution whatever you have obtained that is uh, uh, converging or not or satisfying your basic equations or not by uh, checking whether del dot u n plus 1 is equals to 0 or not. If you are not convert then once again you need to go back to the scheme and do the iteration to get higher accuracy. Okay. So, once you get the value of u n plus 1 it is very easy to calculate the value of volume fraction at c n plus half okay, because all the other values will be depending on the present time step or uh, previous uh, half time step that means history minus half okay, n minus uh, half okay, and you can get the updated values of c. Okay. So, once you get the updated values of c then we have to go for interface reconstruction to calculate the uh, surface tension force. So, I will be coming to that portion next. Now, uh, uh, as we are having some uh, volume fraction field, I will be showing you one figure over here 
uh, okay, before that uh, let me tell you that uh, this volume fraction whatever you are seeing that volume fraction will be unique for unique cell. Okay. So, you will be finding out that somewhere volume fraction is uh, 1, somewhere it is 0 and in some cells we are having uh, intermediate that means non 0 and non 1 and intermediate value. Okay. So, that means all those cells having non 0 and non uh, unity uh, uh, volume fraction value those will be actually occupied by the interface. So, uh, let us see now how uh, we can construct interface in that. So, there are various methodology for interface uh, uh, tracking. Uh, the first methodology I will be telling you is uh, front tracking method. Okay. In case of front tracking method what we do and the in the previous time step that means at nth time step once we know the interfacial configuration on the interface we put some particles like this. Okay. Here you see uh, uh, some particles we have given, sometime we give those particles as uniformly distributed or you can give some heterogeneous distribution also depending on your problem. So, what we do we give these particles. Okay. In the next time instant in case of front tracking methodology we perform uh, the calculation that based on the local velocity how far the particle will be moving. Okay. So, next time instant we will be finding out the future position of those particles and a line connecting between uh, these uh, particles will be giving you a new interfacial position. So, this is a very good technology for uh, uh, some fluid flow problems uh, front tracking uh, is very useful. But uh, you will be finding out difficulty for this type of problems whenever you are having strong uh, uh, flow velocities. If there is strong flow velocity and fast change of interfacial configuration you will be finding out that these uh, front tracking particles will be advecting fast okay, and they will be becoming uh, uh, far apart from each other and uh, construction of interface in between will be difficult. Okay. Next see another uh, methodology which people are using nowadays this is called uh, volume tracking. So, in this way uh, in this methodology uh, what we do we get the volume fraction value of each cell. For example, here I have shown you one figure where you can find out that these cells are having 1 values okay, and other cells are having 0 values and in between we are having fractional values starting from 0.31 to 0.68. So, that means this fractional value uh, tells us that the volume of this cell uh, fractionally is occupied by uh, uh, this uh, shaded colored fluid. Okay. So, we, we know that uh, through this cells only the interface will be passing. We have to satisfy the volume criteria of all these cells and we have to construct the interface. So, this is uh, the methodology which we follow in volume of fluid. So, there are various sub methodologies to construct the interface, this interface whatever I have shown you over here, this is the actual interfacial structure. Uh, so, how to construct this actual interfacial structure for that we are having some sub methodologies. Okay. Some of the sub methodologies are like this, first one is uh, whatever I will be discussing is called simple line interface calculation which is called SLIC. Okay. Uh, so, in case of SLIC what we consider that interface is either horizontal or vertical. So, it will be always in a cell the interface will be always a line uh, in the form of horizontal line or a vertical line. Okay. So, we, we will not be uh, imitating this uh, curvilinear path of the actual interface. Okay. So, uh, what we assume that in this type of slick, uh, slick calculations, we assume that fluid resides on the heavy side of the interface. Okay. Uh, so, there are two uh, methodologies in this slick also, one is called x pass, another one is called y pass. x pass always considers that you are having uh, uh, interface perpendicular to horizontal line. On the other hand, y pass considers that the interface will be always uh, perpendicular to the uh, vertical line. Okay. So, here I have given you one schematic representation how using x pass interface can be uh, uh, calculated uh, or tracked and how using y pass interface can be captured. So, you see over here the volume fraction of this center cell is somewhere, uh, somewhere in between you know uh, 0.2. So, here you see by giving a vertical line we have given uh, 20 percent of the shaded uh, zone and here using a horizontal line in y pass we have given 20 percent of the shaded zone. Okay. So, you can find out the volume fractions are same, but as you go for y pass and x pass depending on the orientation of the interface you will be getting different interfacial configurations. Okay. The same method is actually followed for the other cells also over here and here. Okay. 
uh, now uh, if you are having well resolved interface then only this uh, simple line interfacial calculation whether x pass or y pass will be giving you the accurate prediction of the interface. If the cells are not well resolved then probably you will be finding out difficulty. Okay. Apart from that, uh, after this flick method, which I have not shown you over here, there is another methodology called uh, polynomial line interfacial calculation, which is called PLIC. That is having a, a, a provision for fitting the interface with some inclined line. Here I have shown in SLEEK that we will be having always horizontal or vertical lines, but in PLIC you will be having provision for setting up one inclined line. So, in those cases from the, in, in that case from the uh, neighboring cells you need to fit uh, the value of the inclined line as the uh, slope and the intercept that means y equals to mx plus c, where m and c will be found out from the uh, neighboring cells volume fraction. Okay? So, in those cases you will be finding out interface calculation will be a little bit more near to the actual interface, but complexity of calculation once again increases. Okay. Next, I will be showing you another one which is very famous, which is called uh, uh, Hart and Nichols volume of fluid. Okay. In this Hart and Nichols volume of fluid, uh, they considered that we will be having piecewise constant and stair stepped interface. Okay. Stair stepped interface means we will be having uh, some sort of uh, once again the horizontal or vertical lines, but uh, they chosen they have chosen mixture between the x pass and y pass. So, depending on uh, which one is sweeting best with the with the neighboring cells interface they can swap in between x pass and y pass so in the in the uh, slick methodology i have showed you that there will be uh, same uh, procedure followed throughout the domain but here in hart and nichols view if you will be finding out they are swapping in between depending on the uh, neighboring uh, cells interfacial direction okay so here i have shown you once again the similar type of figure you see this was the original interface but using hart and nichols you can replicate like this which is more near to this one compared to uh, your uh, slick calculations x pass and y pass. Okay. Next, uh, I will show you, uh, uh, okay, before going to this, uh, this slide, let me tell you that some advanced methodologies are also available in case of volume of fluid. You will be finding out that methodologies like height function and uh, some advanced techniques are also available nowadays in uh, volume of fluid, which will be giving you idea of calculation of exact interface. Okay. Uh, so, we are not going into detail of those, but here I will be showing you uh, one uh, freeware which is actually based on uh, height function method okay, and gives a better uh, accuracy of the interface. Okay. Uh, so, here I will be discussing about freeware JDIS. Okay. Now, JDIS flow solver is a freeware uh, and uh, using this uh, we can do uh, two phase uh, simulations uh, um, involving volume of fluid methodology. So, let us first see how uh, JDIS flow solver can be downloaded. So, to download JDIS flow solver, uh, we have to go for uh, the, uh, J, uh, the website of JDIS, so which is nothing but http uh, colon slash slash JDIS dot dlmbar dot upmc dot fr. Okay. So, this uh, JDIS website repository is actually maintained by University of Peary at Marie Curie. So, from there you can download. Okay. So, we require actually three uh, snapshots uh, rather. Uh, here I will be showing you two snapshots, uh, JDIS and GFS view. JDIS is uh, doing the basic calculation whatever uh, procedure I have told you and GFS view actually gives you the uh, visualization options. Okay. So, what you can do in your command prompt or terminal, you can write down uh, this command wget and then the uh, website ID over here okay. and then you can uh, write down sudo apt key add popine underscore key dot ACS. This will be enabling you uh, to download the JDIS uh, software okay, in your repository. So, uh, you will be finding out the key uh, being downloaded and then in the command prompt you can uh, give the update sudo apt get update. Do not forget to uh, change your repository to the uh, universal repository okay, uh, before uh, doing this uh, updation. Now, once you updated, you have updated, then okay. you can type sudo apt get install jdis comma gfs view hyphen snapshot this will be actually downloading and installing present stable version of jdis as well as gfs view okay uh, now uh, to upgrade uh, to the most recent version 
okay what you can do you can uh, go through uh, two steps uh, sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get dist upgrade so it will be upgrading to the newest version okay whatever available Okay, next I will be telling you something about JDS flow solver. JDS flow solver is actually giving you uh, freedom of uh, discretizing the domain into uh, quatri or octree format. Okay. So, what is quatri or octree format? If the domain is having uh, you know rectangular parallelopiped form, then we it will be discretizing the domain using this uh, uh, cube. Okay. So, where we are having 6 faces, okay. all the faces are having uh, directional uh, uh, nature okay so it is something like front back left right and top and bottom okay and then what we will be doing uh, these uh, boxes whatever we have created these boxes will be actually discretized further okay what type of discretization we can get let us say i have given you example in 2d this will be followed in 3d also so let us say this is the front face of this uh, box whatever i have shown in 2d so this is uh, called as level 0. So, if you go for one level of refinement, so this cell, this box will be actually uh, discretized into 4 sub boxes. Okay. In case of 3D, it will be 8 sub boxes. And level 2, uh, this small sub box will be further divided into 4. Okay. So, you will be finding out 16 sub boxes over here. And continuing like this, you can increase the number of cells in your domain. Okay. Uh, uh, now, Jeris gives you some option of adaptive meshing. Adaptive meshing means wherever necessary, there you will be making your grids finer and wherever not necessary, you can go for coarse meshing. Okay. So, depending on some criteria, there are choice of uh, criteria. Uh, so, you can uh, select uh, uh, based on your uh, interface location, you can select based on any other properties. So, here I have shown you one example of adaptive meshing. So, here you see uh, this was the zone of interest. Uh, for the present problem. So, what we have done? We have actually refined this okay, and elsewhere we are having coarse meshing. So, this essentially actually saves your computational time. Okay. Next, let me show you one case study uh, using Zeris and this case study will be uh, dealing about Rayleigh Taylor instability. So, we know Rayleigh Taylor instability is nothing but if you are having two stratified flow and uh, the, in the upper layer we are having heavier uh, fluid, then you will be finding out that it is forming a finger in the, uh, in the lower fluid and then depending on the surface tension, the finger will be forming several structures. Okay. So, that we have solved over here involving uh, two phase volume of fluid method. Okay. So, first I will be showing you some important features of the script what we need to write down. So, here you see first we have written uh, 4 3 GFS simulation GFS box GFS edge. Now, this 4 3 means we are having 4 boxes already I have told you what is the meaning of a single box. So, which will be nothing but a cube in 3D and a square in 2D. So, we are, we are having over here uh, uh, 4 boxes. Okay. So, 4 boxes how they will be placed I will be showing you at the end. Then we are having time, time n time is equals to 1 and dt max, dt max is some sort of idea what can be your maximum time step. Okay. So, maximum time step we have chosen as 5 into 10 to the power minus 3. Now, refinement I have kept as 7, what is refinement level already in the next previous slide I have shown you, here we are choosing refinement level 7. Okay. Now, uh, for volume fraction uh, whatever I have shown you in the equations as C, we use a tracer uh, of volume of fluid as T over here capital T. So, capital T equals to 0 and 1 will be in the bulk and in between values will be at the interface. Okay. Then we can place uh, the initial configuration of the interface. So, here what I have done uh, using uh, C++ uh, uh, formulations, uh, we have written init fraction T and we have given here some sort of expression. If the expression comes out to be positive, then T will be getting uh, uh, 1 and if the expression comes out to be negative, then T will be getting 0 value. Okay. Depending on the value of x and y, which is the uh, spatial coordinate, you will be finding out T is getting some uh, different values of uh, 0 and 1. Okay. Then you, you have the provision for you know translating the interface also. Interface means uh, the intermediate cells, intermediate values of T uh, okay, that you can translate uh, in this fashion. Okay. Then I told you that we are having provision for adaptation, grid adaptation. Here also we are doing some sort of adaptation 
you see we are adapting based on vorticity. So, vorticity of the uh, field we will be calculating and wherever vorticity is more there we will be adapting in the finer cells and wherever vorticity is less we will be going for the coarse mesh. Similarly, we can do vorticity based on gradient of some uh, parameter here the gradient we have taken for T where T is nothing but your uh, volume fraction. Okay. Here you see for adaptation we have written the maximum level will be going to 7 and then we can reduce further depending on the cost of computation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, then we have given the source viscosity. So, viscous term will be uh, added over here in Jerry's as source. So, source viscosity is this value. So, this uh, in this problem we have considered both the fluids are having same viscosity. Okay. Next slide you see over here we have given the densities of the fluid depending on the value of T. So, we have given alpha which is nothing but 1 by rho. So, what we have given alpha is equals to 1 by T into 1.225 plus 1 minus T into 0.1694. We consider that the lighter fluid is having density 0.1694 and heavier fluid is having 1.225. You see over here if T is equals to 1, then you will be finding out alpha becomes 1 by 1.225 and T equals to 0 essentially gives you 1 by uh, 0.1694. Okay. So, in this way we have defined the densities. As it is relatively instability, so gravity needs to come otherwise uh, the finger will not be forming. So, we have given the gravitational acceleration as the source term over here. Source and the gravity will be acting in the downward side. So, V, uh, v is the y coordinate, uh, velocity of the y coordinate and with a value of minus 9.81, so which is in the downward direction. Then here we are having some loops for output. So, we can have the output files at different time level. Okay. So, we can have output time, output balance of different residuals, we can have output projection stats. So, statistics of uh, statistical nature of the uh, uh, values, different values. We can have output diffusion stats at different time level, we can uh, write down those things. Okay. Now, here in this uh, two blocks, I have shown you how you can see or uh, create the results. Okay. For example, here we have uh, first uh, uh, made uh, some snapshot of the vorticity contour. So, you see the field we have kept as V equals to vorticity and vorticity limit we have kept as minus 30 to 30 and after every time two uh, time interval we have created the uh, vorticity image and using PPM to MPEG. So, which is nothing but uh, uh, your snapshot to the movie we have created a movie called VOD dot mpg. In a similar fashion for the volume fraction we have created the movie t dot mpg okay. and at the end we are also writing the value of the vorticity over here in a separate file. Okay. Next, I uh, will be showing you that uh, how to create uh, how to create uh, the boxes as I have shown you over here, here you see we had 4 boxes. So, GFS box, GFS box 4 times I have written. So, this signifies you are having 4 boxes and how the boxes are placed over each other. So, we are having 4 boxes. So, first uh, second box will be placed on top of first, third box will be placed on top of second box and fourth box will be placed at the bottom of your uh, first box. So, the orientation of the boxes are given over here. Okay. Uh, some results I have shown you over here. You see we have started with this kind of interface. If you remember the init fraction whatever we have given that was having a cosine nature. So, at the beginning we will be having uh, a cosine nature of the uh, interface and due to the gravity and density difference you will be finding out a finger is forming and due to surface tension you will be finding out that this type of structure we are getting as time progresses. Here I have shown you a movie which you can find out uh, in real time how the finger is forming and uh, interface is being captured. Okay. Even a very tiny droplets also we can capture in this type of situation. You see how many how small uh, droplets we are capturing over here using volume of fluid. Okay. So, at the uh, end of this lecture let us summarize. Uh, so, in this lecture what we have done we have elaborated finite volume based uh, volume of fluid methodology for simulation of two phase flow. Basic constitutive equations for volume fraction calculation we have dealt with. Uh, we have given you uh, different schemes uh, for interface reconstruction with illustration we have ex, uh, explained and we have also shown you freeware Jerry's flow solver uh, and we have uh, studied a case study of uh, relative instability. 
starting from the installation, setting up uh, the model parameters and running the case I have shown you over here. Okay. So, at the end of this lecture, let us once again test your understanding. Uh, we are having three questions here. So, first question in finite volume methodology, variables are calculated at four options we are having, cell centers, uh, corners of the cell, midpoint of the cell boundary and can be defined anywhere inside the cell. Okay. So, uh, already I have told you for finite volume, uh, the centroid uh, or center of gravity is this uh, is the node point. So, correct answer is cell centers. Okay. Next, which one is not not an interface tracking methodology, four methodologies I have named over here, volume of fluid, marker and cell, level set and finite volume methodology. So, here you see part D is actually a discretization methodology of the domain volume of finite volume methodology. So, definitely that is not the correct answer. Okay. Then interface lies in the cell having volume fraction C value. So, we, we have seen that we are having several options for volume fraction C. So, first option is C equals to 1, C equals to 0, C in between 0 and 1 and last option is C greater than 1. We know that last option is nowhere possible and this A and B those are actually for the bulk. So, obviously, the correct answer is in between 0 and 1. Okay. So, with this I end this lecture. Thank you.